George Washington is the only person elected president of the United States unanimously, not once but twice. But shortly after that second election and all that approbation that came from having everybody in the Electoral College say, yes, we want him to be president again for four more years, he ran into some real problems. Uh, in the summer of 1793, during that first few months of his second term, the, uh, the war in Europe between France and just about everybody else heated up tremendously. And of course, what was happening in Europe was that the French, having taken their cues, some argue, from us, uh, were in the midst of their own revolution, a failed revolution, certainly to be sure. But by the summer of 1793, many, many Americans believed that the United States should enter wholeheartedly into the war in Europe on the side of France. After all, we owe them a debt from having helped us win our own revolution. And weren't they fighting for the same principles, liberty, equality, etc., that we had fought for in 76? Well, Washington didn't see it that way. He believed that the United States should stay out of European affairs. In fact, in his farewell address a few years later, would, would, would suggest that we continue to do that, that the affairs of Europe and the affairs of America ought to be separate. Well, this was not a very popular position. And in Philadelphia in 1793, there were literally mobs roving the streets, uh, burning Washington in effigy, surrounding the presidential house and screaming and shouting uh, epithets. Uh, one estimated one time 10,000 people were storming around in the city, angry at Washington because the United States was not willing to go to the aid of the French. Well, that same summer, just as things were getting very hot politically, and just as the weather was getting very hot, there broke out terrible epidemic of yellow fever. Refugees from uh, Santo Domingo, the island now we think of as Haiti and the Dominican Republic, big revolution going on there among the slaves. Uh, refugees from that conflict had begun to arrive in Philadelphia, bringing with them yellow fever and the mosquitoes that carried it. And here's the problem. Nobody in 1793 understood that the mosquito was carrying this nasty virus. Instead, prof prominent doctors like Benjamin Rush, who had signed the Declaration of Independence, thought that it had something to do with uh, the fluids of the body being out of balance. So his, uh, his prescription for yellow fever was to bleed people, sometimes bleed them to death. Uh, no one could figure out what was causing this terrible disease. Well, eventually, a uh, hundred years later, uh, during the Spanish-American War, after the Spanish-American War, uh, we'd figure out what it was all about and figure out how to deal with it through a mosquito abatement and even a, a, a vaccine developed in the 1930s. But in 1793 Philadelphia, what yellow fever did was to diffuse this terrible crisis because everybody left town, the president, the vice president. In fact, they set up a yellow fever hospital in the vice president's house where John Adams had lived, a place called Bush Hill. Now, the effects of this were profound. One of the effects we've mentioned is that it diffused this terrible crisis that might have broken up the Union at that early stage, might have destroyed the United States. Another effect was that people like Benjamin Rush mistakenly thought that African Americans were immune to yellow fever. And so African American population of Philadelphia, some 2,500 people, pressed into service as nurses and caretakers for uh, victims of, of yellow fever. Actually, 300 African Americans died from it. They were not immune for it any better than, than white people were. But what this did was to cause uh, the ordinary person to think very highly of these African Americans who did behave very heroically. It helped to bring about a very uh, profound change in the way people thought about race relations. A third effect was that some physicians thought the yellow fever was the result of unsanitary conditions. And so in the aftermath of the yellow fever epidemic of 1793 and some successive ones in Philadelphia and other cities, uh, urban planners, uh, mayors, et cetera, began to work very hard on cleaning up their cities, putting in sewers, getting good water supplies. This had a salutary effect because it tended to reduce the breeding grounds for mosquitoes. They didn't know why, but it had the effect of making cities cleaner, better, healthier places to live.